friends, since you are reading about the Constitution today in your article in your packet, I thought I would read a book that is about one of the symbols of America, one of the most famous symbols in America, the Statue of Liberty. Um, but also, I'm going to include some links in this video to other videos that I have not made about the Constitution. One of them is a song that will definitely get stuck in your head, but it's really fun. So, I'm going to read this book in two parts. I'm going to read part of it today and I'll post the other part tomorrow because it is kind of long. So I'm going to read the first three chapters today and the last three chapters tomorrow. So the Statue of Liberty, her torch sways up to six inches in 50 mile per hour winds. So it's not just standing still. Chapter one, a special statue for a special place. The United States of America. Over time, people from many lands have been drawn to it. People dreamed of coming to the United States for different reasons. Some even risked their lives to do so. The, the statue is taller than 12 elephants. If you travel to, by boat to New York City, the Statue of Liberties might be the first face you, will, you see. Some people came to find religious freedom. In the United States, people were free to worship as they pleased. Others came to the United States to find political freedom. Many countries did not hold elections to choose leaders. In some places, it was illegal to disagree with the government, but Americans had fought for the right to express their opinions and won. And here's the caption for this picture. People have been voting in free elections since the United States was founded, but there was a time when only white males could vote. Here's this caption. The Statue of Liberty stands close to New York City on its own island, Liberty Island. You can barely see it there in the distance. Many people thought that anything was possible in the United States. Can you think of a better place for a 151-foot statue that represents liberty? The Statue of Liberty is often called Lady Liberty. She proudly stands on Liberty Island, a small island at the entrance to New York Harbor. Before there were airplanes, most people coming to America came by ship into that harbor. Often, these people became the newest citizens of the United States. Her index finger, so her pointer finger, is three feet six inches wide. That's a huge finger. It's probably about the size of some of you all. Lady Lightning. One of the commonly asked questions about the statue is, has it ever been struck by lightning? The answer is yes. The Statue of Liberty gets struck by lightning more than 100 times each year. Lightning usually strikes the tallest thing around. That makes the tall statue a natural target. Lightning doesn't hurt the statue, however. The electricity travels safely down through her metal skin toward the ground. And here we are on chapter two, the big idea. The Statue of Liberty is an important American symbol. Yet, it wasn't made by Americans. It was a gift from France to honor France's long friendship with the United States. A French sculptor named Frederick Auguste Bartholdi was hired by France to do the job. Bartholdi built his first big statue in France when he was only 18 years old. And over here it says Frederick Auguste Bartholdi created large statues in France before he started working, started work on the Statue of Liberty. He made many small models of Lady Liberty in his studio. It took Bartholdi 16 years to finish the statue and its pedestal. Celebrating Freedom. Bartholdi began to design his statue in 1870. He knew that American colonists had successfully fought for freedom from England in the late 1700s. This war was called the Revolutionary War. France had supported American soldiers by sending money and supplies. Some French soldiers even fought side by side with colonists on the battlefield. Bartholdi also knew that the United States would celebrate its 100th birthday in 1876. His statue was to represent the freedom that was possible there. What a great gift for a nation's birthday. The sculptor had another reason for creating a statue that stood for liberty. France's emperor, Napoleon III, had just lost power. France was forming a new type of government. 
Bartholdi and others wanted real freedom for France. They thought that their government should be more like the U.S. government. Then French people would be able to choose their leaders and have more of a say in how their government was run. They hoped that creating the statue would help the French people understand the value of liberty. And here's a timeline down here. Statue of Liberty timeline. 1776, the American colonies declare independence from England. 1870, so that's almost 100 years later, Bartholdi begins to design the Statue of Liberty. Also in 1870, France's last emperor, Napoleon III, falls from power. 1886, the statue opens to the public in New York City. I'm going to have to turn this page. Symbols of Freedom. How many symbols are on Lady Liberty? Take a look. Each part has a different meaning. The seven spikes in the crown stand for Earth's seven seas and seven continents. The oceans are Arctic, Antarctic, North and South, Atlantic, North and South, South Pacific, and Indian. The continents are North and South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, and Australia. The book. In her left hand, the date has the date July 4th, 1776 in Roman numerals. That is the date the U.S. Declaration of Independence was adopted. 25 windows in the crown represent precious stones, gems, and other natural minerals found around the world. The torch in her right hand lights the path to freedom. And down here, the robes were designed to look like those of, classic ro of a classic Roman goddess. The poem at the base of the statue was added in 1903. A poet named Emma Lazarus wrote about the United States taking in people from other countries. This poem has welcomed people from all over the world. Broken chains around the statue's feet are a symbol of America's freedom. They also stand for liberty crushing slavery in the United States. Chapter 3, Making the Dream Come True. Bartholdi was excited about creating a statue that stood for liberty. In 1871, he traveled to the United States. He wanted to get Americans interested in the project. This was important if the Statue of Liberty was ever going to be built. The statue cost $350,000. Today, that's more than $6 million. The statue was to be a gift from France, yet Bartholdi's group could not afford to build it without help. They needed money from Americans. Bartholdi met with some famous American artists, writers, and businessmen. People seemed to like his ideas. However, no one was ready to give Bartholdi the money he needed. Nevertheless, Bartholdi and his supporters were not about to give up. They decided that France should pay for the statue, but the statue would have to rest on a giant platform or pedestal. The Frenchmen hoped that the United States would pay for the pedestal and its foundation. Even President Ulysses S. Grant met with Bartholdi about the statue. A group called the Franco-American Union worked to raise money for the statue. They held dinners and dances in several French cities where people gave donations. Before long, there was enough money to begin work on the statue that would became, become more famous than anyone ever dreamed. While he was in the United States, Bartholdi also found a good location for the statue. It was a small island in New York Harbor called Bedloe's Island. He liked the location because people would see the statue as they entered the country by boat. So here's this caption. Today, the, the statue stands on the star-shaped Fort Wood in the middle of Liberty Island. This island was once called Bedloe's Island. Fort Wood was built on Bedloe's Island in 1811 to defend parts of New York City. And we will continue our book tomorrow.